I'm just sitting outside, y'all, vibing, getting some air. Getting some fresh air. We got a nice little breeze out here. And a topic dropped in my spirit, dropped in my heart. One, because I went through it and just closed out that cycle. Two, it's something that we don't talk about. But everybody want to say it. And three, I just want to share my experience because I know someone else out there has experienced it or is experienced it. And I encourage you to share your story time or your experience with it as well. I hope y'all are having a good day. Good afternoon, good evening, however this video finds you. First, I want to say this is not a video for you to insert or oh, you should have chose better. You should have known better. You should have used your women intuition. That's for another video and for a whole nother topic that I may cover. Also, I am bashing you niggas that fall into this category. So, if the shoe fits, wear it. But anywho, we gonna get into bitter baby daddies and how they can ruin your life if you let them. I know we got mouth all day for bitter baby mamas and child support and everything under the sun with that. Let me tell you, I'm not a bitter baby mama. I'm one of the baby mamas that, that, that you ain't gotta worry about. I'm one of them ones that's trying to move on with my life. Take my L's. Grow. Learn. And apply them to my future life. Now, where do I begin? How do I start? I want to start off by saying that there are some men out here that hate you ladies. They are jealous of you. They are jealous of your light. The same light that attracted them to you, they are jealous of and they hate it. They hate how you are better than them and men know when you are better than them. That's why some men be like, oh, I don't deserve you because they know that you are that type of caliber a woman that they can't keep up with. They will try to. They will wear a mask and fake it till they make it. But they know in their soul that they can't keep up with you. So instead of rewarding that light that they was attracted to, they want to diminish that light. And many of these men have their ways and how they do it. Manipulation and, and relationship tactics and, 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 and mental tactics, emotional tactics, financial tactics. They all have their ways. But there are men out here that are jealous of you. They do not like you. They do not like how you are moving out here. They don't like how you out here have emotion. They just don't like it. They like that nigga on belly eating a banana. I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit. Stop. I don't like that shit. For sure, bro. I don't like and that And this shit. is crazy because these are the same men that lay down with you. Putting their raw energy into you. Wake up every day. I love you, baby. I love you. I love you. I love you. But secretly on the low, you laying like next to the enemy. And that shit just bewilders me. It bewilders me. 
And instead of telling the truth, they'll just, they'll try to outdo you. In so many ways. And then those ways become evil and mean. You know, because evil can't hide. There's no rest for the wicked. And even though they'll have a mask on and they'll try to hide behind, baby, I love you and gifts and sex and trips and vacations and gifts and all that stuff. They secretly are your enemy and they hate you for real, for real. They'll even give you a baby. Let me say that again. They'll implant a they seed in you and still hate you. And some of them do it to trap you. They think it's going to slow you down and keep you tethered to them. They don't like to see the way you shine. They don't like to see the way that you are growing. They don't like how others love you. They don't like how others are, are enamored by your light. And these be some of them niggas that when you try to leave them, that have that energy of, if I can't have you, no one else will have you. And they will have their own tactics, like I said. But let me get into my story time. For the record, I knew my baby daddy. Before he was my baby daddy, I knew he wasn't shit. But I was young. I didn't understand my energy. I didn't understand my power. I didn't understand my intuition. And when I heard my intuition, I ignored her. Not because I was afraid to be alone, but I didn't want what we had to end. We were having so much fun. When I met him, my life was so serious and so drama filled and so pain filled due to things within my family. And when I finally got away from my family, I met him. Summer 2016, Atlanta, everything was so fresh and everything was so fun. You just had to be there. The energy was so lively. And he and I were having so much fun. The food was good. The smoke was good. The sex was good. The lies he were telling was good, but I didn't care because I didn't see he, he and I getting serious. I didn't see he and I, you know, getting married and being together and having a baby and all that stuff. But 2018, I got pregnant. And by this time, I'm serious because I'm 28 years old now. And I've known you for two years of my life. And I've watched myself grow. I've gotten a better job. I'm making more money. I went out and put another skill under my belt. I went and got my CDL. I employed him to get his CDL too. And he was just like, I'm like, okay. You know, cause I always wanted the finer things in life. I wanted a good life. I knew I deserved a life that I dreamed of. Like I said, I like eating good. I like smoking good at the time. So I saw myself growing mentally, emotionally, spiritually more than he was and the baby just me getting pregnant just solidified everything god was calling me and i wasn't picking up the phone i was having too much fun with the enemy with the devil and didn't recognize it at the time too much fun dancing with the devil but i heard god calling me but i ignored his cause. I ignored all the red flags. I had the baby, even though I felt like I shouldn't have, but I had the baby and I broke up with him because I was like, this is not going to work. I'm already focused in my life and I'm already focused on this baby and focused on being a mother. And, you know, you still lollygagging. He told me he wanted to have the baby, but I say probably two years down the line, he only wanted to have the baby to trap me. I was still naive at the time, thinking he and I could at least be friends and co-parent. And it just never shot into my mind that a man that I've been spending all this time with could be my enemy and could be jealous of me and could hate me. So... 
of course, in his little evil doll, diabolical mind, he was like, yeah, let's have a baby. But I have been starting to see my worth and answer the call of God on my life to heal and to change and to grow. Even though I didn't want to have the baby per se, I knew God was telling me to because if I hadn't had my son, my life was going to continue down the path that it was going on. I was going to continue to be unhealed and dancing and playing around with the devil and dancing and playing around with my potential. Yeah, I had a good job. And yeah, I was making, making decent money, but my heart was closed up and my heart had hatred in it and my heart had pain in it and my heart had grief in it and my heart had hurt in it and my heart had anger in it. So even though physically I looked good, bank account was looking good, I had a nice job driving the bus for Marta. I was tired. I was I was exhausted. And I was losing myself further and further from God. Now, I went out here being no hoodlum. It was just I was ignoring God and all his signs. But anyway, I have the baby. I jumped right into motherhood. You know, I'm eating right. I'm exercising. I stopped smoking weed. I left the people alone that you know didn't mean me no good. Cause when you get pregnant, you don't have no friends no more. They say they gonna be friends. I'm gonna be auntie. E you don't have no fucking friends no more. So it got to a point where it was just me and God. And that's where he needed me to be in isolation. And at first I didn't like it. I'm like, God, I'm pregnant. I need somebody, but me, God, and the baby was just fine. And, you know, baby daddy was cool. He was stopping by because we weren't living together. Um, I had told him I didn't want him no more. And I asked him, was he cool with that, you know? And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, yeah, now you can talk to all them bitches and all them little hoochies on the side that you've been texting and going to see. He didn't like that, but I didn't know that at the time. So he continued the facade. He came over to check on me and the baby, make sure I was good, make sure I had food, helped me, you know, with washing the clothes, took me to the store, cause I didn't have a car at this time. Took me to the store. He didn't have a car either. He was buying me Ubers or I was getting them. But you know, he was helping with stuff like that. I had got me a little seasonal job at UP, uh, at the post office. It wasn't nothing. Since they saw that I was pregnant, I was six months pregnant at this time. And they saw that I was pregnant, so they gave me something easy. I was just scanning boxes in the corner. Easy little job, getting paid like $18, $19 an hour. It ended after six weeks. I had stacked up on diapers and clothes and things that the baby would need. And I noticed that he wasn't buying nothing for the baby. And I asked him, like, why aren't you getting anything for the baby? Like, you ain't even bought a box of wipes or a box of pampers over here. So that was my first sign. I was like, okay. I was like, I ain't got time to worry about you because you ain't my man no more anyway. And I got a baby to look after and I got myself to look after. I got bills to pay. So... I had paid my bills at my little one bedroom apartment and was awaiting the arrival of my child. He was there for the birth. Uh, and he was there, I think, my son was born in March, 2019. So we were trying to do the parent thing and he was coming over to the house frequently to see him, but it started to dwindle and he started making excuses. Now my apartment was right on the train line. I stayed across the street 
If I stayed down the street from H.E. Holmes train station, there was no excuse as to why he couldn't come see me and the baby. But second red flag was after he wasn't getting no affection, after he saw that I was serious, like I didn't want him no more. Like you ain't getting no pussy. You ain't getting no attention. You ain't getting no affection. You're not getting the sweet uh, Z that you once knew. His attitude started changing. So he was still trying to keep it. Like I ain't just gonna ditch her, but he would call and say, oh, I wanna come see the baby. I'm like, cool, come after work. He get off at 3.30. No call, no show. He trying to show up at 8, 9 o'clock. I said, the baby sleep. And he going to be asleep till the next day. I done gave him some titty milk and he out. And you're not spending the night. You're not getting no coochie. So it's just best for you to not come. So this went on. The baby was born in 2019. This went on for like a good two years. All the way from like from the child was born in 2019 to when, to 2021. Now keep in mind, he's still trying to pursue me, but I know you out here talking to other girls, fucking other girls, seeing other girls, like pulling up on them, smoking with them, taking food to them, taking them out on little dates and shit. And I guess he thought that was cool. And I guess he thought that I was gonna go for that. But like I said, men will not take you seriously. They will keep knocking at that door, knocking at that little opportunity until you finally close the door. If you have it cracked just a little bit, they gonna keep trying. And because he kept trying and I kept dissing him. This is when I guess he started to up the ante and make my life a living hell. So we in the year 2021 now. Son is going on two years old. I done got me a little apartment. I'm not sleeping on couches and couch surfing no more, which is the worst with a baby. But thank God I have friends and family not even family just thank god i had friends that rock with me like that so and i didn't have a job while i was sleeping on these couches so thank god for friends real friends thank god for angels that he employs to bless you even when you feel like you don't deserve to be blessed. But, um, so 2021, well, 2020, I did have a job, but I got fired due to COVID. I had just got back on my feet after couch surfing. And, uh, he was helping me, you know, he was pulling up to my friend's house, buying clothes for the baby, buying diapers for the baby. But when I got back on my feet, when I got me a car and when I got me another apartment, that's when shit started going down south. And that's really what let me know that he was my enemy. He hated me and he wanted to dedicate his life to seeing me struggle all because I didn't want to fuck with him no more and give him no coochie and, and be all in his face anymore. There are women that try to get away from their baby daddies and start a new life. We not calling these niggas. We not still fucking these niggas. We not still pulling up on these niggas trying to hang out, trying to kick it. When they get new girlfriends, we not harassing the girlfriend or harassing these niggas. We really like fuck that nigga. But society thinks, oh, she's still fucking on her baby daddy or he's still fucking on his baby mama. No, there are some of us that love our lives and want to move forward. And we realize that we done fucked up and made a mistake. But these people hate to see you grow, hate to see you without them because you were their light, you were their source of energy. And when you leave, now they know they ain't shit, for real. Now they know they ain't nothing, for real. So 2021, he's still trying to 
oh, you know, I still love you. You know, I still like you. I say, you know, the love for you is still there as well, but I'm not in love with you and I don't want nothing to do with you. I'm like, all I want is for the child to be taken care of. I'm like, either you're going to be in his life or not. So he used our child as a way to still try to come see me and during drop off he trying to rub on me and touch me and all this other shit and i'm like nigga i'm not playing with you and when he really saw that i was serious he went and got him another girlfriend and then thought that was gonna make me chase him i was like nah as a matter of fact i'm 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 glad you with her i wish y'all the best because now you can get off my ass so he wasn't flashing her in my face, but y'all going out on dates. All of a sudden you want to come get your child now. He was never coming to get his child to, to where they were spending the night. Now it's, oh, pack him a bag. He coming with me. He staying with me. I'm like, well, you ain't never had no place for him to be. Where are you staying? And, and what you got, Louis? To where you can take this baby overnight and that's how i found out he had a new girlfriend and i guess he wanted me to get mad and i was like shit that's more time for me hell yeah you could take the baby i don't care about that girl but he wanted me to care about the girl and he kept putting me in situations where this girl was involved she want to come to my house She want to ride to the house with him to come pick up my child. One day she pulled up at my house while he was there picking his son up. I don't know why she did that, but I guess she was just trying to make herself known like I'm his new girlfriend now. And I was looking at both of them like, y'all both are pathetic. So I'm like, okay, you got you a new girlfriend now. It's 2021. I need to get back on my feet. I need to, you know, get back into motion. So I'm telling him like, yo, I want to go on some job applications. This is how he started ruining my life. I'm like, I want to go on some job applications. I mean, I'm going to go to, to, I'm putting in applications. I want to get back into the workforce because I had gotten my son into a um, daycare program. What was it called? It was a free little program. And once I secured that, I was like, okay, boom. Ooh, it's getting hot right here. Let me move. Yeah, I was like, okay, cool. Now we back in motion. So I started looking for jobs. My application was getting pulled. And I still, I have my car. So, at this point, I have a car. So, I'm like, can you get him? I'm doing Lyft and Instacart in the meantime, you know, just to keep some little money flowing. So, I would call my baby daddy and be like, can you get him from school? School was not far at all. He could have gotten him. He would act like he done forgot school calling me like, uh, he's not normally here this long. Is everything okay? I'm like, what you mean, is everything okay? I was like, his daddy hasn't come to pick him up yet. And she'd be like, no. So now I'm calling him. And he know why I'm calling him. But he's not answering. He ain't picking up the phone. He ain't picking up. I mean, he ain't answering texts. So now I got to stop doing Instacart. Now I got to stop doing Lyft to go pick up my child from school. Not only is that irritating, frustrating, but it's capping my money. You feel me? If he would have gotten him from school when he got off at 3.30, I could have kept driving, doing rides, and I could have kept delivering, but no. So he started to play with my money. I didn't think nothing of it at first. I was just irritated. Then it started happening rapidly now we in 2022 
Oh yeah, I was working at Amazon too. It had got me a little job at Amazon, but now we in 2022. I don't frequently have a job, so the money is not coming in every two weeks. It's coming in, but not as fast as it would if I would have a job. My car gets repoed at the beginning of 2022, so now I'm like, fuck. I'm limited to what I can do and where I can go. Now I gotta call baby daddy to take me to the store and I gotta call him to wash my clothes, help me wash my clothes and shit. And the, only, and the reason why he's the only person I have to call is because I don't fuck with my family and my family don't fuck with me. So him knowing that I don't have any family support and that I'm out here doing everything on my own was another diabolical reason he would tell me, oh, I'm going to come over there after work, take you to the store. Keep in mind, I got to feed his child, too. 3.30, he get off work. An hour go by, two hours go by, three hours go by. I'm calling his phone like, yo, we still doing this? We still going to the store? I really need to go. He not answering his phone. He not picking up texts. Then it started getting to the point. where his girlfriend was trying to get involved. Why is she calling you? Why she don't have no job? Why she needs you to do this for her and do that for her? Blah, 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 blah. Of course, they probably pillow talking. He telling her my business because, you know, a nigga always got to make the baby mama look bad and make her look bitter. Whole time, I don't want him, don't care about him, could care less, you know? Summer of 2022, we got into it. I pepper spray him and then I ended up going to jail having a warrant put out for my arrest. Chaos is just ensuing all around me and it's due to him. And I'm sitting down with him every time. I'm like, bro, all I want to do is get back to work and get back on my feet. I've never seen, and this is when I really, really knew that he was just jealous of me because I'm like, I've never seen a man that didn't want his baby mama to thrive, that didn't want her to get back to work, that didn't want her to, you know, get back on her feet. Is niggas crying, saying they baby mamas don't work, don't do shit, but lay around all day and collect child support. So I'm telling him about interviews like, yo, can you drive me to this interview? Can you bring me your car in the morning so I could go to this interview? Once again, he'd be like, yeah, yeah, that shouldn't be no problem. No call, no show. He not answering. When he do answer, it's, oh, I woke up late and I couldn't bring the car to you. And I'm like, nigga. So, like I said, he's stopping my cash flow. That's how he was trying to ruin my life, by stopping my cash flow. And I've always made more money than him. So, I guess stopping my cash flow deep down made him smirk, made him laugh, make him feel like, yeah, now I'm the man. Now you got to beg me for money. Yeah, now you need me. And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, okay. So you stopping my money. <sighs> and that in itself was frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Because I'm like, I got this child. I had to pull him out of school. That free program he was in because I didn't have any transportation. And at first, my baby daddy was bringing his car over in the morning with no problem. And then I was taking his son to school and then I was picking him up from work. Work, school, and my house were all in like a 10 minute little circle. It wasn't until his girlfriend started asking questions and started wanting to insert herself into shit that all of a sudden he couldn't bring me his car in the morning no more. So I was like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. So I had to pull my son out of school and now having him at home with me every day, that also stopped me from getting to the cash flow, getting to the money. So I said, fuck it. We just gonna do homeschooling. It's something I wanted to do anyway. I'm still neg neglecting him, deflecting him. He still, even though he got this girlfriend, he's so serious about, he's still trying to be in my face, get in my face. Talking about, oh, I want my family back. I'm like, bro, you don't want your family back. Leave me the fuck alone. Then he started getting inconsistent with P 
picking up the boy. So now this stops me from going out and having fun. If I don't know when you coming to get him, woo, this heat making my scalp itch. If I don't know when you coming to get him, I can't plan anything. So now you want to see me struggle with no money. And he was cash apping me money here and there, but what's $50? What's $75? And it wasn't like it was on a consistent basis. It would just be sporadically. Or I ask him, I'd be like, bro, send me some money. I need some money. And it would take him forever just to cash at me $20, $25. Oh, God. <laughs> Where was that? Yeah, so you fucking with my cash flow. And now you're trying to fuck with my life. You asking me, oh, you must got another nigga. I'm like, bro, I don't have time for another nigga the fuck you in my face so much i i don't have time for another nigga i said i'm not even focused on another nigga i'm focused on myself and focused on trying to get my life right you playing with my motherfucking life and thinking it's funny no i ain't trying to do that i want you to get back on your feet i love y'all i'm like no the fuck you don't no the fuck you don't all the while i keep saying yes i do yes i do so sporadically he'll do a good deed come over to the house bring some toys or bring some clothes or or cash at me some money or bring us some food but i'm like this is not what i need then you get inconsistent with the scheduling of coming to pick up your son and get your son so now i can't even schedule me a a a a me day or some rest time or even if i was talking to a nigga i can't even have no date because you playing you get off at 3 30 and telling me you gonna come get him and sh not showing up to eight nine o'clock you smell me so in my case he was stunting my financial growth and was doing it by being inconsistent being inconsiderate being mean as fuck all because i didn't want to fuck with him he would come get his son you know here and there to try to be like i'm the prize father he would buy him clothes and shoes to you know impose that i'm a good dad i got my son i bought him some new jays i bought him some new toys but i'm like children don't need sporadic toys clothes and new jays they need their motherfucking parent consistently. My child crying, talking about he misses dad. And I'm like, well, baby, I can't do nothing with dad. <laughs> he not calling his son. It takes two minutes to FaceTime somebody. So I blocked his ass. He been blocked for a minute now. A real, 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 real good minute. And I guess he see that as a game. He be like, oh, she gonna unplug me. She gonna unplug me. But I'm like, nah, nigga. You don't deserve to speak to us. You don't deserve to be in our presence. So this has been going on. Like I said, from like the time I had him and it progressed to the year 2022. It's 2024 and I'm just now closing out this cycle, this karmic cycle with him. I finally just decided it's my peace and my happiness is worth more than going back and forth with an inconsistent parent when I know that I'm putting in the work and I'm sacrificing for my child and I'm doing what needs to be done as a mother and as a woman. I'm growing spiritually and mentally and emotionally and I'm healing. And he could see that. Even presently, he told me, like, I could see that you're growing. Keep doing that. It look nice on you. It's, like I said, they'll try to keep up that facade. Like, they really care about you. And, like, they really love you, but they don't. They evil. Well, he's evil. <laughs> and they don't give a fuck. They want to see you suffer. So, the only way... 
only way to close out them cycles, like I said earlier, is to close the door all the way. Don't leave it open. I know it hurts. It hurts you. It hurts the child. But let these niggas go. Tell them about themselves, too, because I was telling him about themselves. I was telling him how pathetic, how, how, how miserable and fucked up he was, how foul he was. And he would stand there and be looking crazy every time because he knew it was true. Tell these niggas that they stink, that they fucking pathetic. Don't have these niggas walking around like they the shit. Tell them they dookie. Tell them I made you. It was my light and my energy that had all of the girls swarming around you and had people wanting to be in your face. You feel me? Let these niggas know who the fuck they are, who the fuck they is. Start telling the truth. Start exposing these niggas. They need to hear it. Spare no feelings because they don't spare yours. While they out playing and you calling and texting them for something that your child needs or an emergency and they don't answer and they play around with the phone, play around with communication, play around with being inconsistent and picking up their child. My child is five years old. He just turned five in March. I still don't have a consistent schedule. And I've sat down and talked to his father numerous of times like, bruh, what's going on? Do you want him on the off days? Do you want him on the weekend? Do you want to come see him after work? Like, what's up? What's, what's going to work for you? Because your child misses you and he want to see you. But his diabolical plan to keep me perched up in the house so I can't go nowhere and can't do nothing is to be inconsistent. But I finally, finally closed that door earlier this year. And it hurt. Because now I totally do have to do everything. I mean, I was already doing it, everything, but now I know I'm not finna get no breaks. <laughs> Until God elevate me and take me to a place where, where I can. But I'll sacrifice. I'll do what I gotta do. Because I don't wanna keep playing with him. I don't wanna keep that door open for him to keep hurting not only me, but hurting my child. He on the phone, FaceTiming our child, and, oh, I'm gonna come get you today after work. I'm gonna come get you today after work. Tell your mom to pack you a bag. And no dad, no dad, no show. And then he never have an excuse. He just pop up like a day or two later and be like, oh, I wanna get him. I'm like, no. No, he with me. Go on about your business. So it's going to hurt. But after a while, you'll get over it. Because who wants to keep playing with an inconsistent motherfucker? Tearing up your life. Playing with your mind. Playing with the child's mind. You know, everybody, the yeah, child need both their parents. Not when one of the parents is playing. Something can only work if two people are on the same page to make that shit work. I can't make a nigga come see his child. I can't make a nigga come get his child. I can't make a nigga talk to his child. And y'all know this, but y'all throw away. You should have chose better. Pick children need both their fathers. Y'all need to work it out. No, the fuck we don't. Some people are just mean and evil. And want to see you struggle. And in my case, my baby daddy just want to see me struggle. He don't care that I got his child. He don't give a fuck. He'll play like he care about the child. Like I said, by getting him toys and clothes and shoes. But making the mom struggle and making the mom hurt. You don't give a fuck. Because I'm the custodial parent. I'm doing most of the work with our child. And if I'm struggling, don't have no car, can't get no job, couch surfing, because I lost my apartment. Well, they wasn't gone. Well, because I wasn't paying the bills, it's just they didn't want to lease to me anymore and I had to leave. That was some political stuff within that community. It was a... Uh, 
Muslim community, basically. And they were trying to get everybody that was non-Muslim out one by one. So I'm now staying with my dad. And that's another challenge because my dad don't want me here. My dad don't like me. He my stepdad and he never liked me. But that's another topic and another story for a different day. But yeah, it's niggas out here that are your enemy. They don't want to see you happy. They don't want to see you thrive. Listen to your intuition. Listen to your gut. Listen to the actions of what these niggas be doing. Don't stay for the kid. Don't try to compromise and work it out for the kid. Because I was... Sh shit, I should have had a job in the circus. How many times I was bending over back backwards trying to compromise. Just so this nigga would see his child. Beginning of the year, I just closed the door and said, fuck it. It's me, you, and God again, baby. And my life has been blissful. It's been peaceful. No, I don't have everything that I want, but I have everything that I need. And I'm just growing and elevating in the Lord. I hope this story time inspired y'all. Gave y'all some insight. Comment below. If it resonates, if you connect. Thank you for listening.